Today, we're gonna to be talking about mud flaps. These are supposed to protect your car from rock debris and all things under this area. However, if you don't have a specific ingredient, it may actually damage your car. So today, we're gonna to talk about how to prevent that in this video. Mud flaps, you can actually get it from a lot of places. Um, Tesla actually sells it, but their version actually only is in the front. And they're right, that area is going to be the most that slings a lot of that mud or dirt or rock debris, all that stuff into this area. The Model S has pretty wide tires, especially if you have a plaid, and it really flings out all this stuff all into this area. I don't live in a muddy street, okay? Like, it's pretty urban. And I had mud all the way going through like half of this door. So by doing this, you are gonna protect a lot of that lower portion of the, the vehicle. The only thing about this mud flaps that is slightly risky is it is a plastic part. And this rests right on the paint. And that's where, you know, we kind of, we try to come up with a solution. So the Model 3 mud flap that we sell, uh, we actually cut a PPF just for that area so that when it actually rests on it, it's not actually resting on the paint itself, but it's resting on a sacrificial layer of film, all right? So this is called PPF, standing for paint protection film. And it is a thick layer of polyurethane that really has that protection ability, right? It's a little bit different from color vinyl. Color vinyl is really for changing the color. This is for actually protecting the vehicle. So this is how we're solving this issue. Because this is the area where the tires sling things, and when I say things like debris, you know, dirt, all this stuff, and if there's a lot of moisture, sometimes the dirt can sit right here. And when the dirt is right in here and there's a layer into the paint, and you know, as you're driving, it's actually moving a little bit. So this is rubbing against the dirt, the dirt is rubbing against the paint. And when that happens, it's actually creating that friction and it actually scratches the car. So when you remove it, let's say six months down the line and you're about to wash your car, it's gonna get scratched up all in that area. I've seen it where I actually went through the paint. So this is why it's so important to have that sacrificial layer of PPF underneath where it made some mud flat. And if you already have PPF on this, you can actually put this secondary layer for added protection, but you actually don't need it since you already have that layer that's gonna be right here and it's gonna be protecting that area anyways. So now that we've kind of gone through the basics, the features and why we do this, we're gonna go ahead and go over what is actually included in your kit. And you're gonna get two bottles. One is going to be for slip solution. The other is going to be for tack. You will also receive the PPF for the mud flaps. You'll get a squeegee and you'll get two types of clips. One is going to be the pin that you see here and there's two parts to it. And you're gonna get the metal clip that goes behind the back part of the fender. Of course, you're gonna get four mud flaps. You're gonna get two for the front and two for the rear for both passenger and driver side. Before you get started, it'll be easier if you turn your wheel to the left. That way you can have a better access. You don't necessarily need the trim tools, but it does help when especially when removing the pins. So we're gonna be using the trim tool and going to remove the clip. Keep in mind this is how it looks like on your PPF sheet. We're going to go ahead and start with the top piece. We're gonna spray some slip solution all around the areas that we'll be installing. We're also gonna spray down your fingers so that it is moist. That way it doesn't stick to your fingers. We're gonna go ahead and peel the top piece and as you peel, spray slip solution underneath the adhesive side. You're going to lay down at the bottom portion of the fender. The alignment is simple. You're going to align the straight edge on the left side all the way to the inner part of the fender. When you're aligning for PPF, you actually don't want to go over the edge and you want to be about one centimeter inside the edge. This is important and you shouldn't be able to catch it with your fingers. Once you're good, you're gonna grab the tack solution, which is going to be water, and spray down the edges. And while you're holding it, you're gonna gently squeegee so you're not moving the piece around. And as you're gently squeegeeing outwards, you wanna push the water or the slip solution outwards and remove all the bubbles. Once you feel comfortable, we are going to make sure we spray tack solution all around the edges and we're gonna do something called sealing the edges and use the squeegees and make sure that it's in place. At this time, it should not move and you could have a little bit firmer squeegee. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next piece. It's the bottom piece 
and spray the area with slip solution and then peel and then spray underneath the adhesive side. The orientation does not matter in this case. It is a rectangle and you're going to align with the top piece with the right edge and also align to the top edge. This goes for the same thing as a top piece. You're going to go right inside the edge. Once you feel comfortable with the alignment, spray more tack solution so that we anchor the top portion of this piece. Once you feel comfortable, you're going to stretch it just across until you don't see any more wrinkles. What we're doing is we're actually stretching this piece so that it's expanding and really going into that compound curve of the rocker. We're going to go ahead and anchor the bottom portion of the piece and then squeegee the rest of all the metal portion out. Since this has a compound curve, you may have some fingers lift up right in where the curve is. We're going to spray more tack solution and gently squeegee out all this area until all fingers or wrinkles are out. If wrinkles persist, one pro tip is to use a microfiber and you're going to wick up the moisture in this area and hold it down with your microfiber and for the most part it should go away. Wipe down all the install area with a microfiber. Remember, in the beginning part of the video, we removed the clip and we are not going to be using an existing clip. We're going to be using the new clip. You're going to make sure the wider portion is into the body of the trim area. And we're going to go ahead and use the skinnier portion to push it in. You do need to put a good amount of force and you could use something more stiff to push that in. Now that that's in place, we're going to grab the metal clip and go ahead and use a straight edge in the inner part and you're gonna slide it in. This actually goes behind so you're not actually touching the paint. If it's loose, one pro tip is to squeeze it down tight so it's a little bit tighter. This is to keep it in place. Just like we did in the front, we're going to go ahead and remove the pin. We're going to spray some slip solution in the install area. Spray your fingers as well, and then spray the top of the piece, and then spray underneath the adhesive side. We're going to start by aligning the bottom portion. You may have to be on the ground when you do this because it's very low. There's a weird curvature here, and that's your alignment point, and you're going to follow that line. And just like we did in the front, you're going to leave about a centimeter around the edges. Once you feel comfortable with the alignment, you're going to spray some tack solution, lay it down like you did, and then gently squeegee it to put it in place. You can see that it's a, simple, it's a small area, so it might move a little, so you have to be very gentle. And later on, we're going to go back to it with a little bit more force. Now that that area is completely anchored, we're going to go ahead and spray a little bit more tack solution to make sure it is really anchored. The reason why we do this is when you stretch across the compound area, it's going to stay and not release. Now that that bottom part is anchored, now we can pull up. And the goal here is that you're actually going just a little bit around that edge. And the reason being is the impact point from the mud flap to the body actually goes slightly around that compound curve. And all we need to do is cover this area. You're going to stretch to the point where you don't see much of a finger. If it's a small finger or wrinkle, it's going to be okay. And you're gonna squeegee it with some tack solution and then squeegee out the rest of the piece. Just don't go back to wherever you tacked. There is going to be some wrinkles since there is a good amount of curvature here. Spray tack solution into those wrinkles and let it sit for a couple seconds and then we're going to slowly squeegee out all that water to the inner part of the bumper. What I like to do if it persists is go a little slower and hold it for a few seconds. You're going to use a microfiber and wick away that moisture so that the fingers or wrinkles don't pop back up. Now that we have the PPF in place, we can safely put the mud flap on. We're going to use the pin first, the wider piece in and this is going to go into the existing hole where you took out that first clip. Once you have that, you're going to use a skinny portion 
and it's a little awkward to move because you have that tire there. So you could use something that's hard to leverage and push that all the way in. Once that's in, you do have to lift it up a little bit higher and make sure it's aligned at the bottom. And that's how you know that it's sitting in the right places. We're gonna use the clips and remember using the straight edge in the back part of this. And you're gonna make sure that both clips, the metal clips are in. One tip is if you for some reason have to remove your mud flaps, I will use a trim tool and you could pry it away. It loosens up the metal clips so it makes it far easier to remove it if you have to. If you want to put it back, all you have to do is squeeze it down and tighten that. It should have enough tension so that it holds that mud flap in place. That pretty much sums up the installation of the mud flap PPF and the mud flaps for the Model S, and this is 2021 and above. If you like this content, make sure you click on the subscribe button. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time.